Gang, for over a year now, I've been talking about True Hemp Science Full Spectrum CBD oils and how they've reduced my anxiety and helped me get better sleep without waking up feeling foggy and confused. I've also talked about the Full Spectrum CBD bombs that relieved my hand pain last year and made playing piano and guitar much easier. Well, gang, today I'm going to tell you about True Hemp Science organic gummies made with Full Spectrum hemp oil that are available now. They come in two different gauges. There are five, uh, 50 milligram ones that have 50 milligrams of CBD and 1.5 milligrams of THC. Then there are ones that are 100 milligrams of CBD and 5 milligrams of THC. Absolutely delicious uh, lemon lime slash orange flavors and also watermelon black cherry flavors. Super, super delicious. Now, now, they also have a complete line of full spectrum CBD products, including oils, tinctures, skincare lotions, sports rubs, chocolates, gummies, all kinds of stuff. Well, gang, How Did I Get Here has teamed up with True Hemp Science to bring you a very special offer that benefits all of us. Spend $100 or more at TrueHempScience.com and you will get a free gift. Just enter the code HDIGH at checkout. There's a little code place there for you to enter it. H-D-I-G-H and you will get a free gift with purchase. That's right. Go to TrueHempScience.com and balance your body and mind with True Hemp Science. Let's get down. You may ask yourself, well, how did I get here? It's time for How Did I Get Here? I'm Johnny. I'm your host. Welcome to the show. I hope you guys all had a good weekend, whatever it is you did this weekend. I, ha- I had a good weekend. I had a busy weekend. I went to Houston Friday to play a show with Skyrocket. It was a, a, a person's 50th birthday, and uh, that was a great time. They, uh, they, they're just the nicest people. They've been fans of the band for a long time. We've seen them at shows. Uh, uh, the lady, ha- the, the birthday lady, Tara, but has bought me cookbooks and stuff. Her husband, Rob, really great guy. They're just really nice people. They're from Canada. And uh, they're always like the first people in those live stream times during uh, 2020 to throw down some cash to always, always looking out for the band. So we're one of their favorite bands and we were able to play uh, Tara's 50th birthday party, which was so, so fun. And their daughter, Annalisa, uh, the dad, Rob, had asked if, if we, we would learn Jolene by, uh, by Dolly Parton for Annalisa to sing uh, cause she's been singing and, and she's, she's looking into becoming a singer and whatever. And she knows it in the original key. And, and we never went over it with her. We learned it in rehearsal last weekend or last Wednesday. And, uh, and then we played it live at this thing in Houston and she came up on stage and she fucking killed it. Like she nailed this song, like nobody's business. The mom's crying. The dad's crying. Everyone, the band's almost everyone's just looking at her. Like everyone in the band's just staring at her. So she came up periodically throughout the the rest of the night. We'd see her like singing. It looked like she knew the words. But like, get on stage, Annalisa. Get up here and sing with this band. She was fantastic. So at some points uh, <laughs> during the show on uh, on Friday night, there was eight people on stage. It was a great time. And let me tell you something, man. We played at Rockefellers in Houston. And that place has a lot of reflective surfaces in there. And last week, uh, when Skyrocket played in Dripping Springs, uh, we were really, really loud. And I did not wear earplugs. And it's really, that one really hit me. Like, for, for, for a lot of the week, I've noticed my ears ringing. It was freaking me out. But I threw in the earplugs, the, the custom earplugs, which I had made at, uh, at Austin Audiology here. Um, and, and I'm back in business. I did the whole show. It was great. It was after the show, my head was, didn't feel like it had been smashed in by sound. So, uh, I recommend all you guys out there playing, like wear those earplugs, man, try and get used to it. It's, that's the thing that I always feel like it's like wearing a condom when you're having sex, like you're a tiny bit disconnected. That's what I feel like. I always feel a tiny bit disconnected from the band, tiny bit disconnected from the audience. Now I do take the earplugs out when, when I, uh, when I get up and sing lead on a song, because it's just, it, 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 there's a little bit more I can dig. I feel like I can dig in a little more confidently. Anyway, that, that's my story of Friday night, got home. So, uh, I spent the rest of the weekend in Houston because as I've told you guys, uh, my grandma's very old. She's going to be a hundred years old in May. Uh, my aunt had that lives with her had back surgery 
last week. So she was incapacitated. So I stayed for the rest of the weekend until Monday to, to, to you know, lend a hand and, and be there with my grandma and my aunt and uh, some other family members that came to help out. So it was a little group of us there helping out, hanging out, spending the night. Some cousins came in for the day. One made a pie. One made some soup. <laughs> it was a good time. It was actually really nice, you know. It's funny because uh, because you, you, you really start seeing this stuff as you get older. Like that life, like, you know, that bodies just start kind of falling apart. And people, <laughs> and people need help. And so I'm glad that we're all there to help and, and we help together. It feels good. It feels very, very good. Um, so that was my weekend. It was chock full of family stuff and a great gig there in Houston. Also, I want to give a shout out to Austin Music Foundation who uh, had me MC on Thursday night. Uh, that was a great event. A great event. 21 years of Austin Music Foundation serving this community. Uh, performances by 20 great artists. I got to hang out with people like Tamika Jones, my friend AJ Vallejo and Kendall Beard. Uh, uh, Jessica Forsyth and Guy Forsyth were there hanging out. Got to hang out with them. See tons of friends. Uh, Wofford Denius, all kinds of great people. I did have a little problems, uh, a couple of problems emceeing. I had a very long script uh, during one of the segments that was in a small font. I did not bring my glasses and the lights were kind of dimming and, and going bright at Geraldine's and that no one could seem to get them to just stay on. So there was a point where I just stopped, which was a real drag. So I want to apologize to anyone who was there for the event where I was like having a little bit of a, a difficult time reading the script there. Jesus, that was insane. Overall, it was such a great event, though. I think they raised a lot of money. And uh, I got to do things like Jackie Benson and I auctioned off a guitar. Uh, she, she got up and she played a whole Waylon solo with somebody. And, uh, and then I, we jumped up on stage and did a live auction. And I think we got about two grand out of that. It was great. It was really great. It was a lot of fun. Anyway, um, I want to thank everyone that came out and everyone that supports Austin Music Foundation and the Austin Music Scene. So speaking of the Austin music community, gang, I have a great show for you guys today. One of my favorite members of the Austin music community and one of the most active members of the Austin mu music community, Graham Weber, is my guest on the show today. Now, not only is he a singer-songwriter on his own, making his own music, he's got a new record coming out this fall. I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a second. He is uh, the lead singer of the band Restos, who you can find at WeAreRestos.com, which came out of the ashes of the band. Uh, Western Youth, who is in the uh, Austin Music Foundation Artist Development Program. But he is also, uh, he runs the House of Songs, which you can find at houseofsongs.org. I'll tell you all about that in just a second. But he also has a charity organization called Graham's Give Back with our dear friend, Graham Wilkinson. And they have a big show this Sunday. Gang, Graham's Give Back and KUTX present the Unity Show which will be benefiting the Other Ones Foundation, Dawa and Free Lunch. That takes place this Sunday, March 5th, at the Hot Spot from 3 to 9 p.m., featuring sets from Heartless Bastards, DZ Brown, Buffalo Hunt, Kevin, Goldie Pipes, Gordy Quist from Band of Heathens, Jonathan Terrell, Grace Rowland, and Jesse Dalton from The Deer, Graham Wilkerson and Graham Weber, and many more, okay? Or, and more, maybe not many more. But go to, uh, go to GrahamsGiveBack.com to find out how to get tickets for this. I will be out there. I'm really excited to go to this show. I'm really excited to see the band Kevin. I've not seen them. They are three of my great friends, and I actually hung out with them on, uh, on Thursday night at that AMF thing. So anyway... Graham wanted to come by and talk about all the things that he's got going on. All right. First of all, uh, Restos, they have an album in the can that will be coming out later on this year, but they have a single and video called Ain't Dead Yet, which will be dropping on April 5th. The video is fantastic. You're going to love it. The song features Jamie Harris uh, singing with them. And as a special surprise, I will be playing the song, uh, debuting some of the song here on the show today. Uh, so they're doing that. They're also playing a South by Southwest set on March 17th at Sea Boys, who are doing shows every single day. It's going to be great. Go to WeAreRestos.com to find out what's going on with Restos. Uh, he talks about House of Songs and how they're finding a new house. Um, he talks about his brand new monthly residency, which will be taking place every fourth Wednesday at the O4 Center. That is Graham Weber's songwriting sessions every fourth Wednesday at the O4 Center starting on March 5th. And you can go to GrahamWeber.com to find out more about that now graham also uh won a black fret grant and with that money that he won from the black fret grant black fret grant he's going to make a 
an all-star album with all of his friends. And uh, he told me I would actually get to be on it. So I'm going to hold him to it. So that's going to be coming down the pipe. But he's also finished a solo album, a, an album that he made during the pandemic at Ramble Creek. That is absolutely gorgeous. It will be coming out later this year and features uh, some of our great friends like Jamie Harris, Bonnie Whitmore, um, Betty Sue, Jane Ellen Bryant, and many, many more. Go to GrahamWeber.com to find out more about it. Also, he'll be doing a couple of solo tours of Europe this year with Alex Ellis. He'll be going to England and Scotland, and then he'll be going to France and Spain later this year. So he's got a lot, a lot going on. <laughs> Graham Weber has a lot on his plate. He's also a family man. If you follow him on Instagram, you see him having uh, bagels with his daughter all the time, places, and he, he really, he all he does, it seems, is work. And uh, he's so good at it. He's such a great songwriter. He's such a great singer, and he's such a great... Just such a great humanitarian and member of this community. I love Graham Weber, and I always enjoy my time that I get to talk to him, and I hope you enjoy it too. Without further ado, this is me and Graham Weber chatting it up. Let's get down. like this big if i'm like it's like 2 30 in the morning at like an after party i'm totally sober chasing around town and <laughs> trying to get the truth <laughs> how do i do this man how do i get in <laughs> anyway so uh are you must be a huge fan of his towns fan yeah oh absolutely yeah, yeah that's one of the, before i moved here yeah i never been to austin before i moved to austin and that's one of the things i knew about it was that he had been here he was gone before i got here but um but you know, I yeah, my dad was a fan, and um, and then when I lived in LA in like '99, um, on my gateway computer, like my big tower, like I had, I, I lived in my car for months and months, and then I moved into this apartment and um, got Ethernet, you know, <laughs> and then so I would just download. Um, this is like still you know, pre Napster. Yeah. Kind of thing. So I would lime just wire. Was that the thing? Scour.net, I okay, think okay. was the one of them. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I remember just, there were many nights cause you could get like, I think the, the, the deal was like, I could get like eight or 10 songs if I started them before I went to sleep. And then in the morning there'd be like eight or 10 songs downloaded. Um, right. Right. Like MP3s. <laughs> so I went through and got as much town stuff as I could for weeks and then just nerded out, burn CDs, you know? And yeah. When you were there, did you ever go to the Ash Grove in no. in Santa Monica? Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, that place? I do. Yeah. That place had a fucking huge mural of him. Like inside. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I didn't know that. I remember oh, going there, crazy. like some people were like, oh yeah, we're going to take you to this thing. And I went there, I'm like, they, they, we have this, we don't even have this in Austin. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, that's true. There's still not a mural of Downs here. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, what, a, what an incredible songwriter. Yeah, oh, yeah. He's, you know, I like. You know, I like sad songs. He also had some pretty funny songs too. Yeah, He's really yeah. clever, and um, but some of the some of the ones that can break you in half are uh, Marie is still, I think, one of the saddest songs ever, and Waiting Around to Die. And I oh, know Waiting Around to Die. That's but, yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah, he knew, he knew how to break down. Um, before we get into too much stuff, I want to talk about this show because I'm going to put this out the week before the show. Mm. Uh, this is Perfect. the the Unity show. Uh, Graham Gibbs Back and KUTX present. It's tons of bands, Heartless Bastards, DZ Brown, Buffalo Hunt, you Graham and Graham Wilkinson. It's a lot of Grahams, man. A lot of, there's, yeah, well. Reynolds, R Wilkinson. Williams. Well, yeah, which, there's. Which one is Graham Williams? Uh, from, uh, not Transmission anymore, but. Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mohawk yeah. Mohawk Days, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Graham Reynolds, I, we, <laughs> we talked about getting some of the other guys to like make a funny video. Um, cause Wilkinson and I met at the cactus, <laughs> like we both moved here about the same time. And then Griff Lundberg would switch our checks up. He'd send like, I think it happened a few times where we were both playing there and then we met to like exchange proper payment with each other. I miss that guy. Me too. He's, he's around. Somebody he saw is? him. Somebody saw him. <laughs> yeah. Somebody saw him. It's, it's like the Yeti for me. Yeah, and it yeah. was one of my, I, I love him and I, I hope he's doing well and hopefully I get to spot him somewhere <laughs> i would love to see him man yeah 
Yeah, I, f- I feel like I'd run up and hug him and take him a minute to f- for him to figure out who I am. You know, from the nineties. <laughs> well, you know, I don't know. I don't know what he's. I don't know what he's been up to. But it wouldn't shock me if he comes to that Towns thing on the seventh of March. That that was always a party that. We, oh yeah. That I was lucky enough to be invited to pretty pretty quickly when I moved here, and I was. It's like Betty Sue and I um, were like the the young blood at that thing. Uh, it was an honor. It still is, and got to get to know, you know, knowing Butch and Jimmy Dale and all those guys yeah. now, but uh, Mickey White always plays and he's become a friend and some of the guys have played with Towns. So he's Towns to me is, uh, it's funny cause there's, there's this weird thing about those Lubbock guys. I just mm-hmm. had Colin Gilmore on here yeah, too. And we talked about it that there's, there's just this weird, like there's such a weird, like psychedelic Oh, they're trip. Yeah, yeah there's a they're thing. all on it. <laughs> yeah, but it's only from that place. You know what I mean? Towns Van Zandt is a little more meat and potatoes. He's not as like, well, he was stoned. <laughs> yeah, well, they, they, they met him when he was traveling. Like right. he was like hitchhiking or something with a bag of records. I mean, they, for the the story, many many different uh, incarnations of that. But uh, but, but like, no, they're all like that. I mean, that the, you know, Jimmy Dale and Butch, man, they're like. They're on a different, uh, a different celestial plane, man. Yeah, it's great. I love talking to this guy. I, I told Colin <laughs> this story. Like his dad was has always been like one of my favorite people to talk to, and uh, I used to live at the Congress House when I lived here, or when I moved here in the early '90s. And he was there recording something, and I, I would, I would assist and tape up and do whatever, and also make coffee. So I, like, you want some coffee? He's like, yeah. So I made him some coffee. I'm like, here, you want some milk in it? He's like, yeah. Put some milk in it. And he takes it, and I go, here, here's a spoon so you can stir it. He goes, I don't want to stir it. I want to watch the galaxies form. And I was just like, they're fucking so out there. Like, it's uh, that's not something that Towns Van Zandt would say. That's what I'm saying. The difference no. between those guys and, and him is, like, this weird, like, acid <laughs> trip that they're all on. Like, <laughs> It's true. Yeah. I would say there's something in the water, but I I gotta think it's the wind. That's that's the that was my biggest one. Yeah. I've been out to Lubbock. It's been it's always been the wind. Well, it's weird because like, like this, that that looking around there and seeing that expanse. Same thing like in Marfa or whatever. Just that level of expanse. I don't know how it doesn't seep into your music. You know I what I mean? It, I think it has. And you know, most of the, you know I don't I don't think Jimmy Dale has a place out there. I think he's in like Spicewood. But Butch is most of the time he's in Trilingua, which. You know, that's that makes Lubbock look like Manhattan. Yeah. You know. <laughs> okay, sorry. We got off of the, the Unity show, which is a big deal. Heartless Bastards, Deezy Brown, Buffalo Hunt, you guys, uh, takes place Sunday, March 5th at Hotspot. So where where does this money, where do you guys distribute this? Because Graham Gives Back gives money to other nonprofits, right? Raises money for other nonprofits. Yeah, absolutely. So that when Wilkinson called me uh, January of last year. And both of us had independently had this idea that we were each going to like, I wanted to do this thing. I'd done a thing called Graham stock yeah, yeah. years ago. And I wanted to do that again. It was supposed to happen in 2020. Of course that didn't happen. And so, uh, but both of us had this, the same thought was to, to let's, we, you know, we're, we are not the best people to, you know, go volunteer every day or go, right. you know, but what we can do is we can put on a, a show and call a bunch of people and I know how to produce a show and, um, and book it and, and, and try to raise money that way and then designate some, some charities, um, without starting another 501c3 cause there's right, way right. too yeah, many yeah, of them. Yeah. And I, I, <laughs> yeah. I work for one called the house of songs. So, um, the house of songs was, you know, we, we came in as the, kind of fiscal sponsor, you know, we're, we're accepting donations through the house of songs and then, but all the money is going back out to, um, to three charities that, uh, were started by musicians and friends of ours. Um, the other ones foundation, which is up at camp Esperanza where they're, uh, building homes. So people who are displaced have, uh, can maintain a residence and look for a job, you That's know, great. Have, uh, and then free lunch that was started by, uh, Chris. Jazz too. Uh, well, yeah, jazz, yeah. jazz does free lunch. Okay. So, and, I adore jazz. Everybody does. And I just love what she's just started doing. She just decided she was going to feed people that were hungry and, um, it should be commended and recognized. And, and, uh, you know, I think she gets her due, but I'm sure that there's never going to be enough of that. You know, you're, yeah. 
fulfilling basic human needs. And then um, Dawa is the other one that we're giving. Uh, we're splitting all the proceeds three ways uh, to each one of these three charities. And, and Dawa was started by Shaka from Riders Against the Storm. Um, and they give direct payments for people in need um, in Austin's marginalized communities, like um, definitely definitely leans heavy into like minority communities, yeah. underserved communities. Um, but they do great work. And I mean, I think if you can help somebody out, if they, you know, if they can't pay their bills or, you know, if they're going hungry, you know, it's, there's, there's so many things we've done. I've done so many shows and, and put on things for ham and Sims and, and, you know, the house of songs is my, you know, that's my, my heart, but, and all those are great. And, uh, but this one, we wanted to do something where we can, you know, we, we're paying the musicians, but we want to serve the community as a whole, right, you know, right. so. And we're both lucky enough to be, like, you're involved with House Songs, I'm involved with Awesome Music Foundation, yep. but those aren't, like, life or death. Uh, <laughs> no, profits. I mean, no, I mean, it's for, you know, that's, I mean, that's more of a creative, yeah, right, I mean, they're Sim, needed. Ham and Sim's definitely probably a little more crucial right, to the survival right. of yeah. people, but, but you know, what the, the AMF I love, you know, I, I do, and... um I'm a big advocate for artists and, and, and advancing their careers and creating opportunities for them. And I think through this, we've been able to, you know, we're, like I said, we're, we're paying, everybody's working cheap, but they're getting paid to play. And I think that that's, it's, it's also a way where our community, your and my, you know, our artist community yeah. can pardon the pun, but give, you know, kind of give back to the other people in the city, especially the people that really are down on their luck. And I mean, you know, worse like, than us. Yeah. 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 And like I was, really like no home. Well, we were talking yeah. about when I was in LA, I mean, I was, I didn't have a home. I was, you know, I lived in a parking lot of a Rite Aid in Santa Monica for months. <laughs> and, uh, and I've never forgotten that, you know, now I've got, you know, I've got, I live in a house, I have a family. It's, I'm very lucky, but really that could, that could you know, I hope it doesn't happen again, but you know, I, I, I would I would I don't want to see anybody have to go through that. I don't think anybody does. But if if you can make some sort of impact or an inroad into changing things for the better, right? Um, why not? You yeah. Know, so, um, so uh, so this show is going to feature all of these great acts plus more. People can go to uh, GrahamWeber dot com to find out. More. Yeah, uh, GrahamsGiveBack dot com. Gra- okay, uh, or GrahamWeber dot com. Uh, yeah, all the info lineup and ticket information is there. Yep, and at the hot spot too. No, there's always that. I love that place, by the way. It's fun. Yeah, yeah. it's a good spot. I went out and checked out that recording studio a couple weeks ago. They've done a really good it's job nice, in a fairly man. short amount of time. Like it's changed. I was up there right before the end of the year, and then I was yeah, just yeah. up there, and it's it looks great. Yeah, they're doing a great job. Yeah, I saw uh, some of the stuff that they filmed too. I saw some Archangels footage that was just it sounded and looked fantastic. Evan is their their shooter, yeah, and he is great. He is great, and he invited so, me out there. Yeah, he's they're they're all great. I mean, um, Sarah Dossi is yeah. one of the bosses, and Robin Foxworth has been working hand in glove with with me on forever. This. But you worked with Robin for a while. Oh yeah, but yeah. back since uh, since uh, Western Youth. Yeah, era. yeah, yeah. She's been up at the, she's been up at the hot spot, and they've had some changes. You know, they took over the venue and their light stream productions is is you know running and operating that place now and but robin is my favorite stage manager uh for any event if i could ever get her to do it and she's gonna do this show for us oh, she great. did she did graham stock at uh shoals garden in august and uh um but yeah and sarah her one of my favorite acts in town is kevin kvn yeah and they're they're on that show that's great that too show, yeah so, yeah yeah that's a super group of, of it's, powerful it's so fun powerful it's, ladies i love it I really yeah. do. It made me dance, and I don't dance. Like I, I danced like an idiot at South by last year. Like I right don't up see front. that. Uh, there's probably some phone footage, and I'm hoping it. Uh, <laughs> I'm hoping it's as rare as a Griff Lundberg sighting, <laughs> as of late. <laughs> I loved. I, I'm sorry. I, I when I when I moved here in the early '90s, that I played there mostly, and. Uh, and and then uh, my band would play at the Texas Tavern, which was the place next. Did you know about this place? No. Where was the Texas there's, Tavern? Okay, so uh, there's there's the Cactus, and then next door, there was like a bar, and there's like I think there's like a place to eat there, like a big. Oh, room. it's like a food court now. Or yeah. Something. Okay, yeah, so yeah, that yeah. was a bar with a bar on one side and a, and a band venue on the other. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. I never knew there was a band venue. Yeah, in the it's union. called Texas. It was awesome. 
And I think people like like Jane's Addiction might have done their first show in Austin there and stuff like that. Wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. So let's let's talk about Restos really fast. Okay. That, there's so much shit to talk about with you. I have it. I have it all like <laughs> sectioned off in different things. So uh, Restos is is what came out of Western Youth. Yeah. Say the the phoenix that rose from the ashes of Western Youth. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Without the easiest way, the, kind of the the easiest way to say it is we were we were six and yeah. now we are five. Yes. So that's the that's the diplomatic uh, answer about that. But yeah, yeah we're man. having a great time, and um, you know, one of the members isn't isn't in the group anymore, and but we are writing. I mean, everything we're writing right now. When I saw you the other night, I was I was with Brian uh, Brian Bow plays drums, and it's great to see him too. I haven't seen him forever. He, man, he's the best. He, he's he's been a uh, you know everything you want in a friend and a bandmate that just and steps up and I'll you know. say that having gone through the artist development program with you he was heavily involved yeah and that's not normally a a, a quote unquote drummer's vibe <laughs> it's not no no he's Unless the most Lars reliable Ulrich. drummer I yeah. think yeah yeah, yeah. nothing against uh, other drummers I've played with but he's he's very uh, you know we we pretty much run the 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 new LLC together as we pretty much did on the last one too but. Uh, uh, we're, you know, we're writing together, which it, before a lot of it was, you know, I'd bring in a song or the other guy would bring in a song right. or so, to some extent. And, and it was kind of done. Yeah. And then we would just fill in the gaps and make it sound like a band song. And, and the best part, like I get excited. I get, I'm really tired usually by the time we rehearse and it's kind of a slog for me to get up to North Austin and, and get in the space. But once I'm in, uh, you know, we'll, we have something we're working on. We'll get that in a really good spot. And then we'll kind of be like, all right, who's got ideas. And I haven't been in a true collaborative project like this, maybe ever. And, oh, really? Um, yeah. And everybody, Mark Nathan, our guitarist, it just came up with a great, you know, had a great um, progression. Isn't that and, fun as a songwriter? Like I, I, love I it. prefer I, in, I, I in, <laughs> in my heart of hearts <laughs> to too. be in a collective creative thing. I, I, let me, let me rephrase that. Yeah. When I have the last say. <laughs> yeah. Well, I still get but to write I, I the words. I prefer that to just working alone. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, you know, I, I like writing lyrics, although it's, I mean, some of it, it's, it's been an exercise for me because I, you know, we'll get, it's all, I'm, I read a, I have a book that was a Paul Simon about songwriting, old book, but he, when they were cutting maybe, maybe Graceland or maybe One Trick Pony or something like that, but he had, he would go in and he would get the structure down so they would record the music and then he would go in and just try to fill in the gaps with the words. So of course everything is moldable now. You know, if I write a line that needs to extend out longer then we'll just extend it. But I like writing like that. I do too. I, mean, I really do like I, writing to a track that's already happening. Well, that's like, what we're, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, we're arranging, you know, every time that we think like, and if something's too predictable, somebody is calling it out. Like, yeah, this is repetitive. Yeah, like, yeah. Let's, let's get, straight let's yeah you know turn left where everybody thinks we're gonna turn right so and then i get a we'll get a good like instrumental recording where i'm kind of like going ba, 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 you know just right. so yeah, i kind of yeah. know yeah. where i think the words yeah. are gonna be yeah and then i've just uh and i've been traveling a lot so i've just like headphones and driving in the car and trying to come up with with lyrics is kind of fun i just super fun yeah just don't want to screw it up then you know what i mean like, that's <laughs> a little more pressure so ain't dead yet is going to be the first single and that has a beautiful video. Who did that video? Um, Annie McCall, uh, Annie Bradley McCall. She's uh, she's a dear friend. Um, she's she, awesome. She's great. Yeah, she's going to do a few more of our videos. Um, what we didn't want, she she is a great animator. She's also uh, very schooled in like stop action animation. So we're going to do some some stuff like that too. Uh, but we, with us all being kind of, you know, I'd say we're fairly busy. It's kind of hard to all be in one place at one time sometimes. So, and I also didn't want to see any more videos of me. There'll be live videos of us playing, <laughs> but I didn't want to see another video of me playing guitar or walking on a railroad track they, or did, something like that. <laughs> you know? You know what? Yeah. I, yeah. So. It, it's tough being a guy like you because I bet when you go to a photographer, a lot of times they're like, hey, I got this real. And you're like, no. Yeah, we got a brick wall. I'm not over going here, to the radio, <laughs> railroad track. Yeah. I think that stopped, though. Do people, people don't still with their fucking strapped around their back? I don't know. There's, there's I, like, I, I, I'm not doing that. Are anymore. you friends with Todd Wolfson and Will Sexton? I, I know him a little bit. Yeah, I there's, like Todd. I don't know him that well. There's one that they guy. did in like 91 
yeah. or something, 92, Isn't when it was that? still okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's him with the strap guitar walking, I, I, like Sunrise. Like that's my what he's doing that My little sister took my first promo pictures, and that's, <laughs> that's exactly what, <laughs> what it is. <laughs> what is that about? I'm traveling. I'm just a guy with a guitar out here in the middle, just traveling, just well, moving. When I did that in like, I don't know, the mid to late 90s, it was... Uh, I, I remember I had the East or uh, Nashville skyline I had Nashville skyline. Right. And I was like, take this picture. Just let's do this again. <laughs> like, let me yeah, just yeah. totally rip off Bob Dylan from the get go. You know what I'm photo still, I think is great that. that most people should rip off the freewheeling one where he's with the girl oh, walking great. down the little street there. Yeah. The that's a, print, that's a nice Valentine's print street day. Or, um, yeah. I love that. Yeah. I've been, I've, I've tried to recreate that. His Carl, I think did recreate that he for did? an album cover. Yeah. Maybe not huh. exactly, but it's it's fairly. I think it might just be him, but I think it might be the same street. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's that's a cool, my it's a Valentine's Day. What are you doing for Valentine's Day? You've got the Valentine's. Spending it with you. We're doing. It. <laughs> <laughs> my dog's going full Valentine on this pillow. Um, so when is your next resto show? Do you guys have South by stuff? We yeah, we've got a couple things. Um, we're. We're on standby for the official. I don't know. I don't know. What unofficial stuff? Because I've, I've got no badge. I don't have. Do. I, I don't. As of right now, I don't either. Um, we're playing Sea Boys. Um, oh, on in Friday. The, during the thing they're doing? Mm hmm. Yes, good. Yep. So. Uh, Ian Moore's playing that. A lot of cool people. Like, that seems of, like a. Yeah, that's really you cool. You want to go see. Uh, that's always the weird thing about South by when you Let's like. Go see Austin X. <laughs> people yeah. you just don't go see every Wednesday. Yeah. <laughs> you go see him during South by and they're like, shit, I miss Kanye. <laughs> well, probably not Kanye, but somebody. Yeah, I'm not going to miss him. <laughs> um, <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> yeah, I think, well, I think uh, who's playing on either side of us? I'm trying to remember. I looked at it the other day. I think uh, I think Tamika Jones is actually playing outside. They have an outside and inside stage on that. So She's back. Yeah. That's cool. I haven't seen Tamika play in years. Me so. neither. Um, but yeah, we're doing that one. I think we're doing something for Sun Radio. All right. And uh, something for, I think we're playing at Central Machine Works. I'm just not sure. What I day. love that place. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited. And then hopefully, I don't know, if we get an official, we get an official. Yeah. If, if not, not, it's all the same. Yeah. And I think that uh, I sh hopefully by the time this comes out, I'll know for sure. But a House of Songs, I think it's going to do... Uh, as of right now, as we tape this, we will be doing something at Antone's on the uh, Saturday of South by. Oh, great! South by Music. So a day party there. Invite um, me. You're invited. I would love to go to. I love. Yeah. I love House of Songs. So, yeah. oh, real quick to move over to House of Songs. Now the house isn't there anymore. You're going to a new place here yeah, in so, town. Yeah. So we still have our. We still ha we had in December of 21. We had to sell the property here. It was primarily funded. We never really got too much. Just like once, I think we got a little something from the city. We got a little bit of uh, philanthropic money here in Austin, but mainly our funding was uh, internet from international arts councils, right? And um, and unions and and things like that. So when COVID came, there was no traffic. We couldn't bring anybody in, um, and it just got to be. It was just not affordable to keep it. Um, so. We sold that house. We still have our place in Arkansas. Um, still working with our, our partners in New York City. But I think, um, again, hopefully by the time this comes out, we should know exactly where the new Austin house is going to be. Uh, I've been looking. I've been touring houses. There's some uh, very generous um, philanthropists that are that are going to get us a house. Good. And I think that's great. Yeah. Yeah, and then we'll be, and, and I'm really excited. It it should be a place where we can host events um, and uh, have multiple programs going on at once. It's not going to be walking distance anymore, though, is it? Not, not. to hear. Okay. Not to hear. Um, that was pretty sweet, man. It was really easy for me, too. I could get there in five minutes from my house. Yeah. So. Um, and my daughter goes to Travis Heights Elementary, so it was for a little, there was Super a short convenient. window there yeah. where I was like, oh, I can just go work and be at be at her school in like two minutes so but this one i right as of if everything goes according to plan we should be in cherry wood um so which that's be, great yeah yeah that's so. a great neighborhood as well yeah yeah um all right so people can find out more about house of songs because i know we just talked about this thing if you don't know what we're talking about go to house of org. it's an amazing organization started by our dear friend uh troy campbell yep yep just talk to him you did did you tell him you were coming here yeah did we tell you about that time that he almost punched me in the face? No. It was real weird. 
She, <laughs> she's the funniest, one of the funniest human beings I know. He's a pretty, and there was a point a where we were dude. very, very close. And we were neighbors and everything. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> he's the guy that brought Patty Griffin to town. I don't know if people give him enough credit for that. But yep. he is. Um, so I saw him. I hadn't seen him in like a year and a half. And he was in, in at, at Whole Foods getting salad from the salad bar. So I just walked up and grabbed his butt. <laughs> Don't do that to him. <laughs> I'm, I'm totally going to do that to him. It's very bad. No, I'm doing it to him next I time. I thought he was going to hit me. <laughs> <laughs> and it took him a second to register my face. <laughs> so I was just like, I mean, he looked at me with like such intense hatred. I was freaked out. But anyway, uh, I love that guy so much, man. He's so funny. I'll see him in a couple of weeks and I'm, I'm going to sneak up on him. And when, he, when he was my neighbor, he lived two doors down. And I called him one day. And to see if he wanted to go to the movies. And he did not answer his phone, but I left him a message. Hey, Troy, it's Johnny, just seeing if you want to go to the movies. A couple of days later, I got, I got a postcard through the, sent through the mail saying, sorry, I can't, can't go to the movies. I've got what? too much stuff to do. He wrote me a postcard back and sent it through the mail to say that he couldn't go to the movies that day. Yeah. So, that, wacky dude. Oddly, that doesn't sound crazy uh no it's pretty funny yeah (laughs) i think it all ended with him saying like uh oh sorry about the postcard too but the lost art of postcard writing i'm trying to bring it back (laughs) something ridiculous uh he's a he's a sweetheart man i I, we you know it's pretty much the two of us uh running this deal and we're you know we finding ourselves in a lot of very interesting uh, situations with very interesting people and working with uh some great artists. We're doing a thing. I, there's a thing called the Fresh Grass Festival. Um, that they that festival. They've had a festival yeah. in North Adams, Mass, uh-huh. for 15 years or so. Yeah. Um, but then a couple years ago, well, it's supposed to happen during COVID. Then it's it's they're going to do their third one this year. It's a a second festival in Bentonville, um, about three blocks from the House of Songs. Nice. And uh, we've we've had a cooperative with them. Uh, where initially it was three artists from the Northeast and then three artists from like the greater Northwest Arkansas kind of radius area that, of, of artists we work with and then getting them to live together for a week, write songs together and kind of show this back and forth, you know, uh, cooperation. Uh, it's gone really well. A lot of, I mean, we average about 20, 15 to 20 new songs every time we do it. We record them. Um, now, do you guys? Is there? I can't. I can't remember. If, you guys don't own any of the publishing. No, we any don't. Songs. That's pretty amazing. We, we on purpose, we do not. No, I know, but that's uh, yeah. pretty amazing. Because yeah, wouldn't it be nice if you know one of those things ended up being something? And well, it, when it happens, it's great. I mean, it's good for us. Yeah, it's yeah. good for the nonprofit to be like to point to it, and the artists are always really generous and yeah. and think and they're like, yeah, we've met. You know, we had a song, um, not from the Fresh Songs project, but a very similar project that was like international song of the year nominee at the americana uk awards last year that's awesome um between a uh girl from the netherlands and uh judy blank is her name she's great and uh dylan earl this guy from uh around fayetteville and they wrote this beautiful country song and i i got to hear it from like right when they wrote it they're like check this out and i was like yeah that's kind of great that's a classic and then, um, so to like be able to track the progress of those things is, is awesome for us. I think with the Fresh Songs thing, we've been talking to to the heads of the Fresh Grass Foundation, who are amazing people. It's a great organization, and you know, there's we're, we're in talks about how to take some of these recordings and maybe put out, you know, volumes of of things that maybe maybe can make a little money to go back into the program. Yeah. Um to kind of ease the burden of, of cost on, on both of our sides. But, um, yeah, it would, it would be, I don't know. It, I think the headache though of dealing with other people's publishing would, would far outweigh oh, God, any, can you any not, sort you of guys percentages would to, we would get. Have, yeah. Start a whole new company. You'd have, would to have get a whole to new be, staff that just it'd tracks be a label that. then at that yeah, point. Yeah. And the last thing I want to do is run a label. <laughs> the last thing I don't. I so don't know speaking how to do of that. labels, you have a new album, a solo album. Yeah, and we're finally get like twenty nine minutes and forty seven seconds into it. I bring up your new album. Yeah, this album is fucking great, dude. Thank you, John. It really is, man. You're such an incredible songwriter. Thanks. 
There's like a pop sensibility. You were just about to say something. No, and I was like, I I'm going to get into it. You can keep in. saying that. I'll, I'll sit and listen to this all day. There's a melodic <laughs> pop sensibility to your songs that like uh, that really appeals to me because that's that's the that's the place where I I go. I'm not like a huge folk person. It has to be like if, if I'm into somebody that's like a singer songwriter, it's like a Jamie Harris. Mm -hmm. Like it's like a, it could be a, a Fleetwood Mac song. Might as well be. You know what I mean? Or something yep. like that. Um, your stuff is like that too. This record has this, uh, I have this Sunday morning feeling from albums. There used to be like a very Sunday morning vibe with my mom. You yep. know what I mean? Yeah. Like there's a record, you like Tapestry is a good one. To, you know, like this. Yep. It, and this album has that that same it's not gonna, it's not gonna shock you into awakeness. It's gonna ease you into your day in this beautiful way, and you can sing along. It's just fucking great. You're just fucking great. Thanks, thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, it's a, it's pretty chill. It's a pretty chill record. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't know. I like it a lot. I made it with my friend Britton Bisonhurst during the pandemic. It was, um, it was something where you weren't supposed to be in the room with anybody, and then I think I'd been in my house for like. I don't know, a month and a half, two months, like really just hadn't gone yeah. anywhere. And I called my buddy Britton, who I've made the Western Youth record was at his place. And I made a record called Women with him um, in 11, 2010, 2011. And um, uh, So Long Problems record was with Britton. And we've done a jazz EP that hasn't come out yet with Motank, Michael Motanko and Josh Flowers. and With you? Yeah, I just sing. I just croon. It's like all really? porch songs. Yeah, they, they we tracked it live, and that's in the can too. I just Fuck, don't know what to do with cool, it. That is cool, man. Yeah, well, someday. I love Micah. I do too. Yeah, he's the best. That guy's a badass, dude. Yeah, I'm so proud of him. He's really, you know, he's somebody that he was still he was teaching music, you know, piano lessons yeah. and stuff. When I uh, Ben Ballinger actually rec recommended him to me when I was wanting to find somebody that just could play like piano, and I want to do these gigs where it was like Sinatra in like Hoboken days, like when, but you know, he would just maybe push the piano around and there'd somebody play the piano and I just didn't want to carry anything. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, so we did, we did that show at the gallery quite a bit for a while. And then, but then he's, he, you know, he's, uh, Mike is just, he worked really hard and he's, and he's good. He's a very talented guy. He's a really good person. Are you friends with Monty Warden? Yeah, yeah, of course. That guy, like that guy, he went and like wrote with the dudes that wrote the songs, like those original songs. Yeah, yeah. The, so like the, he dug deep into that world. Well, he produced the record when I was hanging out. I love Monty and Brandy, and they live pretty close to me. And I used to go over. I, I'm due to have coffee with them again soon. But when they were making, he was producing a record for a crooner guy, and uh, they cut it out at Pert Pertinalis, and they cut one of my. Songs two of my songs on that record oh no shit yeah um and i played guitar on one of them um i didn't know you you had that world in you yeah well the, i didn't the, the one the one of the songs is definitely that way and then the other one they kind of made it so um but it was uh but yeah no monty you know he's he's he, he's gone back into like old original meaning of pop music you yeah know, that kind of stuff um and he it's a, like People could do that shit, and it, it would be like funny. Like, look at what this guy's trying to do. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> but it, it's like it's fucking really good, man. Oh yeah, yeah. He's got the good band for it too. He's yeah, got a, yeah. Um, he does. Yeah, we. <laughs> he. Uh, my my thing wasn't his stuff. You know, Monty's a happy dude, man. Yes, he is. You know, and and what I wanted to do with Micah, I remember explaining it to Micah real, and he got it right away. I was like, I want this the whole set. Is gonna. I want it to be like the last half empty glass of scotch at two thirty yeah, yeah. in the morning. Yeah. Like that's what this. I want sad torch songs and. Did you dress it? Did you dress it? In I like wore a suit. suit. Yeah, 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 yeah. You got but it. I got, well, I have all this <laughs> yeah, hair yeah, and yeah, garbage yeah. going on. So the idea, honestly, was like a money making thing. I was like, I don't know, maybe somebody will pay us. To oh, to do private do this. shows and shit. Yeah, yeah. private shows. Yeah, like yeah. we'll keep it weird. You know, you got. <laughs> You got the, it looked like I used to say um, it looked like a, I was ambush makeovered, but they hadn't got to the stylist, the hairstylist yet. It's like a young Willie Nelson. Yeah, in a, in a, in a suit. You with, have the braids. Yeah, yeah. And the running shoes. You're I know, perfect. I'm, I'm the, I'm, I've been here 18 years. It's happened. I'm, the week the week I moved here, I went out and played at Pooties. My wife and I drove out to the open mic at Pooties, and um, there was some guy. I don't remember who was running it. 
But there were, we were looking around, and she goes, God, there's a lot of guys that kind of look like big <laughs> Willie fans out here in Spicefoot. I go, yeah. I was like, that's probably what we're going to all look like in like 20 years. <laughs> and big laugh. And I got a speeding ticket when we left. And then uh, I don't know why that matters, but I just remember that's the last speeding ticket there, I ever got. Before you started looking like that. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> but it's happened, and I'm okay with it. I'm into it. So Me too. <laughs> until Me too. In, until I give away the hair this is gonna sound weird but like i've i've always been a fan of like uh uh god what is his name he was just on my show and i told him this stuff and he started laughing and i was like i'm serious god what the fuck is his name gary p nunn oh yeah like a guy like gary p nunn like you could see gary p nunn from 100 feet away and you know exactly who it is he's got a bandana around his neck he's got the glasses he's got that smile and a hat on right yep yep uh uh willie um, also, you you you'd know uh, like the hard graphics of ZZ Top. Totally. Like just a just a just a beard and sunglasses and a hat. Like you know exactly who it is. Yeah, if you can stencil somebody. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. Yeah. Exactly right. You have that in that video. Like mm. when you go from skeleton to you, it's like I mean Jamie Harris too because I know her because of the sunglasses and just kind of like Jamie's like weird uh, like she stands with her head back a little bit and her chest like she's like. Oh yeah! Fuck you, mother! Like she has that kind of like stance, uh-huh. uh, like she's Puerto Rican or something. <laughs> <laughs> what you want, motherfucker? Um, well, she carries yeah, she carries a blade. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but your you your stencil is amazing. Like yeah. you're like that is Graham Weber. Thanks. Yeah, I mean you did it for now. Yeah. <laughs> if I perm this hair, my hair's so long now. If I perm it, I feel like I could have like this awesome sly stone thing happening, but. I think that'd take a lot of permanent. <laughs> yeah. Are you a fan of his? Sly Stone? Yeah. Yeah. Me too. I'm a crazy yeah. fan. Yeah. Crazy fan. Okay, so this record, so you wrote it, Enric, you, you, it was, it was a, six weeks into the pandemic, and you're like, <laughs> yeah, well, well, let's it, hang out. <laughs> yeah, well, I called, so Britton and I were just talking, I'm like, how are you doing? He's like, oh, well, you know. He kind of, he doesn't, he, he works at the studio a lot. So he's, he does like little Marzahn stuff. He does all those records with that, with uh, Lindsay and um, Will Johnson. He works with a lot. He's, he's fairly busy out there and he, and he doesn't, I don't, you know, it's a big deal when he's in town. Like if he leaves Oak Hill and comes out to hang out, like we went and saw Randy Newman a few years ago and it was like a big deal. I was like, I don't think, I don't think we've ever like gone out in town. Like we had dinner and I was like, we're wow. like in the city together. Um, so he's kind of like, he, he, he kind of keeps out at the studio anyway, but it was a pretty simple conversation. I was like, man, I'm bored. Um, have you seen anybody have you been around anybody besides your family? And he's like, no, uh, have you? I said, no. And so the idea was like, I know the studio really well. I said, look, I could come out and there's you know double pane glass in between the control room and the, and the tracking yeah, space. Yeah. And like, I could just come in the back, you know, we could wear masks and, yeah. and then, but neither of us had had any, any contact with, with humans uh, outside of our bloodline or right, right. marriage. So um, we pretty much then, you know, we, we got over that and we were both fine and never got COVID or anything. And, um, but we made most everything ourselves. I think Rob Sanchez his, used to be in Monahans with uh, Britain, uh, drummer, great drummer. I think he laid down a couple of the drum parts one night where he, he had come over a um, month or two after we had done a lot of the tracking. So we put that on there and, um, uh, and Luke Jacobs did some steel, flew in some steel. Um, and then I had, uh, five awesome, uh, ladies that I know. Yeah. Uh, the top five, man. They're, they're pretty good ones. This my, my Wu Twang ladies. Um, but bon, Bonnie Whitmore, uh, Betty Sue, uh, Jane Ellen, Brian, uh, Jamie, of course. Uh, and, uh, my friend Ida Vinu, from Denmark, uh, sent in vocals on that. The one with Ida, I'd co-written with her a few years back, and the one I do with Jamie, I, I wrote with her as well. Is that Seasons? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you can really tell it's her voice on there. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. She, we, we wrote that. I mean, we had it for a long time, um, and then she didn't put it on her record, so I put it on my record, and she put another one that we wrote together on her record. So. Which I that's the one that she put on her record is called "Love Is Gonna Come Again" and it's my favorite song that I've been a part of. Like, and and I don't sing it. I I won't. I kind of refuse to even attempt oh, really? to sing it because I'm like, you got it. The way you do it is the way it should be done. Yeah. So But uh, and then she's uh, and Jamie's all over the Restos record too. She's she's part of the band. Yeah. She's available. So. Yeah. 
Um, yeah. So when is it going to come out? In the fall? The solo record? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I'm trying to shop it over to some like European distro and, okay. and do some stuff. I'm going to England. A couple times. A couple times. I'm going in July, uh, and I'm going to do some. I'm playing with, uh, at the beginning of 2020, I did a tour, a sh- about a week and a half run with uh, my friend Alex Ellis and his band, and it's called Our Man in the Field. And um, they're a great band. They're they're really good guys, but it's it's chill. Uh, I went out and, and sang a little bit on their their new record. They recorded in Portland uh, last, not this past December, but but a year ago, um, with Tucker Martin, who's done um, well. He's done a bunch of records that are a lot of like uh, the, I may be wrong about this, but I think like the Decemberist. And big Portland guy, but Matt the electrician had done a record with him. Oh right, that's why I know that. The name. Heathens had done yeah. a record with him, and um, but great guy. And anyway, Alex and I are going to go do like a two man solo kind of thing. Maybe bring their steel player along, and then uh, then I'm going to go back over in uh, October and do some other stuff in France and Spain, and um, just you know, in between. I, I don't exactly know when we're going to drop this album, but I think I think sooner than later I, that's that's one of the reasons i want to do the black fret thing last year to get money to put it out yeah congratulations properly. on that oh way. thank you so and through that uh i put together like this i didn't want to use restos because i wanted us to be eligible to do it again because <laughs> it's a totally different project right um right. so i just called a bunch of people except for Bo brian Bo played drums but uh, micah played keys and great singers and um carrie rodriguez and warren hood and great fiddle players and luke played steel and so through that it was kind of this like i'd say revolving door we had many of the many of the same people um but that the idea was like the the, those were just fun shows to do and i said well why don't we you know if we get this money let's come back into britain's place and make a very austin centric Album. album yeah yeah so if we do that, I'm gonna call you and you come sing on something with me, dude. I would love that. Yeah, I would love that. I want to like celebrate. I'm a big flag waver for you are this city and and, and our me community. Too. So I know you are. I, I have this vibe. I've been I've, the last year. I've been having this vibe where I'm wondering if I'm like the guy that's still hanging out at high school, like when he's like 32, uh, yeah, or something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> do you get that? Yeah. Like I some of it. Like you're part of it. You're like I'm part of this community, but you're like. Am I like a weird, like, all right, all right, all right, <laughs> like all over right. there by the phone booth? Yeah. <laughs> well, if you got to be a character from that movie. Yeah. <laughs> well, the thing is, it's so weird because this town has that, um, it has that thing. And, and you can kind of become the Graham Weber of Austin. But if you went to like Phoenix tomorrow, it would be very difficult to maneuver as Graham Weber the way you've built up for the last 20 years maneuvering through this music community. Well, it's, yeah, when, when I saw you at the AMF thing the other night, you know, I walked in and it was like, and I haven't seen a lot of people lately. I've been, I've been out of town and I've been, you know, working and parenting and working on all these different other things. And, but just like bumping into folks, like it was like, it's like, oh yeah, this is, I, I'm very comfortable yeah. navigating this landscape. Like I know enough people I've been, I've hung out long enough. I don't think I've, I don't, th- I don't think I've pissed too many people off um, where people are still fairly nice to me. <laughs> there so. was No, you've never, I know, you have your beloved fellow. Uh, there was a thing, I can't remember what it was. It was this big thing on Auditorium Shores. And I remember Jane Ellen Bryant texted me and was like, oh, are you coming to this thing today? And I was like, no. She was like, oh, do you want to? And I was like, yeah. So she got me a pass and backstage and the whole thing. And I think John Fogarty was headlining or something. Oh. Cool. It's like maybe five years ago or something, and uh, four or five years ago. So I go down there, and man, I had a lot of drinks. And I was standing there with Shaky Graves and John D. Graham, and I was like, man, this is so weird. That's like weird family we're in. Like mm-hmm. there's your weird Uncle John D. Graham. <laughs> you know what good, I mean? Like, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it is like that. When you go to things like we went to the other night, that AMF thing, it's like, What's, you know, there's your cousins from Western Youth. Well, now they're in Restos. Yeah, 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 exactly. I mean, I, you know, not to be too much of a homer about it, but I mean, I put, I still, I, I tell people this all the time when I'm going to other places or conferences and stuff, and you know, I'm like, I'll put, I'll put my people up against any other city, including, you know, 
the other big ones, you know, I, and I love going to Nashville. I, I think there's a great community there. I've become friends with a lot of great artists there. And, um, I don't know. I like it here. It's funny to say that <laughs> it's, yeah, it yeah. seems like here and it, it's a little, it's a little less like this than it was, but, but here has always been less about the numbers and just how good you are. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's an artist, you know, you, I'm telling you anything yeah. you don't know, but I mean, this is definitely, I took a guy last night who was in town for some work stuff and we went to Sea boys to see Andrea McGee uh-huh. and you know, Dave shares just playing organ which I had told him, like, oh, this guy's a great guitar player, and I walk in, he's playing organ, and uh, <laughs> but also uh, probably better than it was, it was he plays great. guitar. It was yeah, great. I hate that and guy. she was great. And Such uh, a jerk. there's a girl named uh, Monica Valley. It, Sammy P had told me about her. Uh, f- moved here from Nashville, killer guitar player, and we just kind of come in, and, and this guy's like, so all these people from here? I said, well, not really. I mean, you know, I'm not exactly sure where Dave's from. He's been here as long as I have, if not longer, but. You know, Andrew's from Belfast, and this this other lady just moved here from Nashville, and you know, trying to explain economics of the music industry right. a little bit to this guy who's not really in that world. Um, you know, I'm like, you know, people come here to to meet other really good musicians and yeah. to like get to you know get their deal together, you know, get yeah. their sound, and and it's a it's becoming less affordable for sure, but yeah. Um. I think everywhere's probably getting less affordable. That's what I've always thought so. of it as, though, because I remember, like, in the 90s, uh, Arista opened. Mm-hmm. They opened a fucking label. Like, Arista Austin was an really? like imprint label. Oh, I had no they idea. signed, like, uh, Wayne Sutton's old Sister Seven. Oh, yeah, yeah. And a couple other people here. There was a guy named Cameron Randall who ran. He's a really nice guy. Um, but then uh, I remember, like, BMG or someone opened a label office here in the 90s. And the funny thing is there's people that, that complain all the time. Like, man, we need to get, like, the big business in here and the big industry in here. And I'm like, I, that's kind of like what – I got to feel like it would kill what it's about because it's about – the industry's out there. We can all go to it. We've all been – like, we've all been able to fastball, spoon, yeah. me, you. Everybody's been able to go do their business shit where you can go do it. But it's nice to have this place be the place where you get it together and no one's watching you. Yeah, and to live. You and know, to live. like exactly. I, I mean, food's good. People are pretty nice, barring our one week every other year now. It's not <laughs> Freezing that cold. Death. Yeah. Yeah. Um and and honestly, you know, we talk about labels, you know, and like I don't even know I'm not I I don't even know what, what that is anymore. Yeah. I don't know what the benefit to that is. I don't know. It seems like you can kind of work from about anywhere you can live anywhere right um i was just at this conference that i i go to usually produce stuff at at the folk alliance in kansas city and uh and i bumped into some some folks that i i I met a there's a girl named andrea van campen who i i i just met briefly i tried to get her to play for for me a few years ago but it didn't work out and but she's on instagram and i follow her on instagram and i really like she's great and I'm like, she lives in Lincoln, Nebraska, and uh, and tours a lot. And I'm like, there's somebody that you know, Lincoln, Nebraska is not, no. you know, Nashville or you no. know, it's not L.A. But she's doing it. There's and I saw great bands from all over, like the Midwest and the South, and uh, or, you know, was it you that posted about the Accidentals? I, I did not, but I've worked with them quite you a bit. They're in Michigan. I love yeah. them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Traverse City, right? I th- Grand Trav- Yeah, 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 somewhere yeah, up yeah. There, yeah. They've been on the so. show a bunch of times. I love them. Oh, cool. I love them. Yeah. Yeah. They're sweet. They're um, talented too, man. They're fucking badasses. Well, they play. It's funny. So the first time Western Youth played South By, like official South By, was at the top of the, what's that Hilton Garden Inn? Yeah. You yeah. Know yeah. And I remember the lineup was, it was the Accidentals who I'd done, I'd met them before through the folk music right. world. And then us and then Billy Strings. And uh, and not, like Billy String is a big deal now, like he's like big, big. Yeah, deal. yeah. Not you know people people love him, um, <laughs> but the Accidentals played right before us, and like that was the first time I think I'd seen I'd seen him in like hotel rooms and these little showcases right. and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. But uh, no, they're and they're and they were kids when I met. I mean, like kids. really kids. Yeah, yeah. And their mom's their manager, and she probably still is. <laughs> um, but they're you know it's a family business, and they you know they're still still doing it. It's funny, yeah, because it came here a few times. The first time they came, they were kids. And then I remember the last time I saw them, one of them had, like, pink hair and was, like, they were a little yeah. more, like, in your face about stuff. 
Yeah, I, I, I assume, I don't know how old anybody is. Everybody looks young to me now, but. They're probably 30 now. I mean, I think they started coming on like 10 yeah. years ago on the show. Yeah, they probably are. They're probably. Um, what about the Restos album is is finished and it's going to come out in the fall as well? Yeah, so the rest of the stuff is going to be rolling out. We have our first single drop. That song, Ain't Dead Yet. Um, Jamie's all over that. She sings that one with me through the whole thing. Yeah. Um, that single and video will come out on April 5th. Uh-huh. And um, and uh, then we'll I think about every six weeks we'll have a new six to seven weeks we'll have a new single and then we want to release um, and probably independently unless something cool happens um, and there's some other little there's some kind of labels around here that we're very interested in you know some some, some things that's uh, that's one thing I was gonna say is that what the lack of industry that's been here has fostered all of these different black fret it's fostered uh house of songs and then now this whole new over the last like I don't know five ten years uh, and, and nine mile records space flight records mm-hmm. all these cool fucking labels that are really trying to do shit that aren't in it obviously because you can't sell any records or that they're just literally people that want to make sure these records get put out like yeah. it's so fucking cool yeah i, I that, that's the most intriguing thing about yeah. it yeah so it's like because they don't take your masters no and there's really no advance on it yeah. but we paid for the record already so like you kind of just want to have somebody if somebody else wants to help right i mean that's kind of the idea if we can get somebody to you know sign on to it and um so, but that we're hoping to have it out in September so we can go, we'll go to Americana Fest in Nashville and um, have a new record at right. that point. That's, that's, that's the plan right. um, for, <laughs> I mean, we'll see how the plans go, but, yeah. uh, but I'm, I'm really excited for, for the rest of the stuff to come out and to get back in the studio. We're, we're kind of compiling new material um, and I'm, we're not playing a ton uh, we're playing Jane Leo's record release show uh, on the twenty sixth, oh, um, which maybe maybe at, before or that might have already happened by the time we hear this. But uh, yeah, it's a shit. S- I'm gonna be out of town. That's Sunday, right? Yeah, it's a Sunday. Where is it gonna be? They've been doing a month all February oh, at, at Hotel, Hotel Vegas. Vegas. Yeah, right, right. So Jamie drops her record on the twenty fifth, and then um, Jesus, and then. We'll, oh right we'll i'm out of town that whole weekend yeah she's here too yeah it's gonna be a fun weekend um and then i'll have to sleep for a couple of days probably yeah. after that so but uh yeah hoping to hoping to drop that and then i've got a i got a new series um that's in association with the house of songs but yes it's at the 04 center um this month february i'm sure this will happen before this comes out but it, it will be the fourth wednesday of every month and it'll be me and three other song uh, other songwriters in the round so Awesome. That'll be a fun one. I love that place. I do too. I, Todd is all, everybody there is really really sweet and it's kind of been yeah, you know as things have gone with the cactus it was my home club too and, and you know love Griff to death and then Munoz moved in and him and I are great friends and I'm working with him on the Towns thing him and Butch uh at the Long Center. But I think a lot of the acts and that that kind of vibe that was at the cactus for years is kind of living at the 04 center now in my mind it's a nice nice level of of people coming through and then supporting local acts as well so you definitely have to get a lot more people there than you, you do, do at the yeah. cactus man yeah you do yeah but if you go in with tempered expectations on what I went, do you know that band uh madam radar i went to their to their release show last year there at that and they they had like somebody doing those oil light things oh yeah i know i've done some shows like that. Oh, there. shit man that whole yeah. place was just like a cartoon it was amazing i love that yeah and then we too. so kalu had done that those guys came in that dude's from san francisco he used to do stuff at, like the Fillmore or something um who does those, those yeah, yeah cool lights and uh and then yeah i saw a picture of that and i called or i texted kalu i was like what the hell is this he was like, oh yeah, man, it was it was dope, and I'm like, okay. And then I was working with him. He had come, he, him and Wilkinson and Sydney come, came up to Arkansas for a, a project I was doing up there, and uh, I was asking him about it. And then I talked to the guy at the O4 Center, and uh, I was like, I want, I want that, like if, for us to play, because yeah, yeah. for the band, one, it's it's kind of loud, and we played there with the Heathens before, and like felt like we might have been a little loud. I don't yeah. know at that time we we're a little. Not as not as loud in some respects now, um, sometimes. But when we did South by 
last time, last year, uh, Sun Radio, they had the light guy in there. And it was totally different. It changed it from being a church to being this, like, yeah. you know, yeah. acid nightmare. It was great. Yeah. <laughs> It's where I want to play every show with a band. Yeah. So I think I caught COVID there. At at that Forza. show. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. It was a lot of people at that show. It was real packed at that show. And uh, you know how like they do the the entryway is where the bar is, mm-hmm. and there's all these people were it's in log there. Jam. And I talked to probably forty eight people, <laughs> like this far from each other's faces. Yep. And uh, and then I had COVID the next week. Yeah, that. That's all right. Well, that's that's why people were getting sick at churches when it was really bad, you know. Yeah, that's but true. Luckily, I don't, I don't attend uh, any services for, of any sort. Well, so. people will be attending <laughs> attending the uh, the every fourth Wednesday services. I hope so. Yeah, we'll make sure everybody's uh, sterilized or whatever you have to do to. Let's, we'll make them open their mouth and we'll spray Lysol in their in their mouths before they come in. Remember wiping down groceries? Yes, you did it. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. And I remember just being in there all paranoid, taking out the groceries. And like, I'd buy groceries for like two and a half weeks at a time because I didn't like, mm-hmm. that's wearing rubber gloves and like a mask and like what? wiping the bags down, <laughs> wiping produce down. Looking back at that, that was a dumb idea. We would buy organic produce and then wipe them down with like bleach or whatever. I'm like, this is, this is very counterproductive. <laughs> so it's been a weird couple of years. <clears throat> Yeah, but you know, you seem to make the most of it, though. I mean, you stay like, busy. Yeah, you know, um, but yeah, I mean, I'm I'm excited. It's exciting to be like I haven't been back to Europe since, and I haven't been just going to some of these things where it does. It, South by last year, Graham Stock felt like that. All the Graham's Get Back shows have been like that. The first one was Bob versus Bob, which was Wilkinson's Dylan baby. versus uh, Dylan Marley. versus Marley. Yeah, I did one of those once, and. uh and then and I did the last waltz yeah. thing this year out at Far Out, and like, but every one of these kind of things where there's a bunch of bunch of people on the show, yeah, yeah, it is like a family reunion, man. Yeah, and, it's, yeah. and it's I love those man. I think that little break maybe bolstered that sense yeah. of community a little bit more, you know. Yeah, um, I'm yeah, I'm pretty happy. About you know what it. I, I like, and I'll I'll probably go to to the Unity show. Is uh, I I like when I don't have to do anything, like yeah. the other day. Yep, I just hang out. I love not having to do anything <laughs> and getting to go to the thing and just. Well, luckily, I'm not be a weirdo. Wilkinson and I are going to play a little bit, but early in the day. Yeah, yeah, early. <laughs> like I kick love it Heartless off. Bastards. I saw you guys. I saw you guys open for like uh, Western Youth. You did a show with Heartless Bastards at a place we did. that I liked a lot. Yeah, I'm trying it was to think if it was with. Uh, it might have been Erica's. I don't know if they were calling it Heartless Bastards. But oh, I think, it was yeah. Erica's solo thing. Yeah, it was but basically. You're right. Yeah. It's, kind of turned back into that um but no they're you know erica's awesome you know they're they're and they came up to arkansas and we did a gig they were she, they were going to open for the flaming lips and yeah, they yeah. did a warm-up show and we had a private um and it was tony camel and then i'm trying to think who opened that show um local artist oh willie carlisle who's blown up if you don't know this guy you should get this guy on your show when he comes to town okay he's Awesome. Can you introduce us? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. yeah. He's one Willie the, Carlisle? Willie Carlisle. Okay. Yeah. He's he's blowing up. He signed with, uh, um, oh, it's Asleep at the Wheels Management. It's um, Sam and those guys. But he's doing great. Um, he's from, you know, he's, he's from Illinois and Kansas, but he's he's really an Arkansas guy. And, uh, but he man, he's amazing. But he, he opened that show. Then Tony Camel played with his band. And uh, and then Heartless Bastards played, and I got to meet uh, the rest of the band. Great people. Jonas is a really cool guy. Oh, I and, love Jonas so much. Man. And Mark, who's in Restos, is a dear friend of mine. Before we played together, um, but he was the guitar player in Heartless Bastards for like eight years. Yeah. And so it was kind of like when I first before I met him, I was kind of like, I don't know, man. Am I supposed to? Am I supposed to like this guy, or you know what I mean? It's yeah, kind of yeah. like I kind of. Yeah. It's like meeting the new boyfriend or something, you know? Yeah. But man, what a great dude and really oh, talented. So talented. Um, and they've been, and they have been really, really cool. Erica's and their whole team has been really, really supportive. And, and them getting on this, this uni show is a real game changer for, for our little cause here. Yeah. Yeah. So, and DZ Brown, I didn't, I, I, I got to admit I was asleep on DZ Brown for a long time. And I finally, 
I I really think he's he's a talented rapper. Oh man, I, I'm very picky. Yeah, <laughs> about rappers. Yeah, anymore. yeah, yeah. I'm a, I'm a huge fan. He was in our artist development program a couple years ago. Oh, cool. Yeah, he's he's a fucking talented dude, man. I love that guy. Yeah, really cool. Um, man, Tony Camel, did you did you? Uh, I love that guy too, man. He's so sweet, so sweet, so good. Oh his, yeah, his record's great. That record that he made. And did you listen to the podcast that he did? He did like an accompanying podcast to his record where he just went down and like. Just talk to people that were from the Gulf Coast, like weird Gulf Coast characters. No. Fucking awesome. No, I'll check it out. Awesome. No, like, I didn't it's, know about it. It's so good. I can't I, remember what it's called, but you can find it on Spotify or something. I'll ask. Uh, well, I'll, I'll check it out. I'm going to see him. He's going to come do the town show at the Long Center, too. He's oh, going to do a couple towns, one or two town songs. Man, that's another. Have you, uh, are you, are you a, a, a Bruce Robeson fan? Um, I am. I'm a fan. I, I, you know, I don't really know. I've met Bruce very, I mean, it, you know, living in town, you know, yeah, you yeah, kind of meet yeah. people, but I, I don't really know him, but I know he works with, you know, Kara Rodriguez is a, is like family her, her and Luke and Cruzy are, you know, there, there are people and, you know, he does a lot with, I know that the next waltz thing was Carrie's involved in that. Tony's involved in yeah. that. Um, I think it's a really cool project. I, I'd love to. I think he did that record with Bruce. It's, it, it's, it, I probably did. But I Bruce think has got going on. Of it. Yeah. Like, I think they're recording to tape and everything's live. And it's also like Kelly Mickley just put on a duet or something with, uh, with Raul Malo. I think oh, it, I just, she I put it out the, today. Uh, yeah, I saw, the, I saw the thing on Instagram. But she played it for me a while back. And I was just like, I can't, like, I just like, that's porn for me. Yeah. It's like live recording to tape and like some oh, cool yeah. fucking studio on old mics with like outboard gear. Like, I don't know where they record. I don't know where that is. They do that Arlen maybe or no, he has it. He has his own place. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Not he's surprised. it's, it's his, it's, it's, and there's like a whole, philo- there's, it's not just a recording. So there's like a philosophy to it. Like you okay. gotta be badass. There's no pitch correction. There's no, you fucking record live with a band. Do it. Go dig it. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. A- so it makes you uh, really appreciate every record from the the sixties and before. Yeah, you know, the, the, yeah. These people really well, played know, these songs. I've noticed that now. I, I would say even more than even like the nineties and early two thousands. I'd say like now, there's people that are out there like making records like on purpose. Like I'm doing it live. We're taking it off the floor. Even I'm singing live. Yep. You know that stuff is really happening too. Yeah, yeah. I, it's I, nice to see. I love it. I've not been. In, well, yeah, I don't know. That record, that the, the solo record, is ma- a lot of it is, uh, I don't think I multi-tracked a lot of stuff. I mean, for my my stuff, but it wasn't with the band, you know? Right, the jazz right. thing, though, that was with the band. I was in an ISO vocal, and then the trio played, and those are just as they are. That's the first time I've really done that. Yeah. And there was no, we didn't go back and overdub vocals or change anything. We had the ability to, but... But it's ex- it, it's more exciting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And well, you're I, capturing magic. You're not carving out perfection. Totally. It's not perfect <laughs> by any means on my part. No, but the magic is there. Y- yeah. And, and when it, with jazz, which I mean, I, I, that just sounds so stupid. <laughs> it's so funny out of my you mouth. and I having this conversation. Yeah. Like there's yeah. jazz people right now going like, shut up. Yeah. Both of you shut up with your G yeah. and D chords. They would be right about that. <laughs> but I don't play like I can't play that shit. Um, but this kind of like living in that where like I remember saying to the guys on headphones, I was like, hey, um, you know, we know there's going to be a break here. Yeah. You do. You you do the jazz, and <laughs> jazz and I'll, out, baby. And I'll I'll figure out when I'm supposed to come back in and sing on this thing, and and it and it worked, and it, that was so fun. I really would like to go in and do five more songs and get a ten song album out of that. And, you uh, should, man. Yeah, I yeah. think you also need a whole other band you need to deal with. I, I do. <laughs> well, One that would more be under project. my name, and just like you know, yeah, I, I, yeah, that's true. I don't need anything. I need. I need that. Uh, well, that one, like, if, deprivation if, tank. if you guys could get, if you guys could get some good private work, that would just be like a great money maker. It would be, but Micah's busy now. He's like, he's playing in Sir Woman, and he's playing in oh, his band, right. and he's. Uh, but you know, we'll find a time. There's, a, I know jazz guys. If you need it, yeah, yeah I'm always up, man. I, those those kind of bands, like bands that can play private things. I'm in a cover band that plays 70s and 80s music, and even though that's goofy and shit, like. Yeah, it's nice to be able to use what we've learned. Like we were saying earlier, like, what am I going to do? What am I going to go be a dentist or a successful lawyer? <laughs> right. Like, I can't go do that. <laughs> right. But I am trained in this one thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just did a private gig. Uh, great, great friend, you know, it was for like a law firm or something. And it was just, you know, there wasn't much to it. But it felt pretty good to get paid to 
to sing, you know. <laughs> like, yeah, and, and get it paid wasn't like, and it wasn't hard. You yeah, know? So. yeah. We we play these weird fucking like we did a show for a law firm a couple years ago, where it was like us and Snoop Dogg, in like a hotel in Houston. What? Yeah, Skyrocket opening for Snoop Dogg. Dude, you never told me about this. <laughs> That's all. I, well, the thing is, I didn't get. I, I've had. I've. I've. I had a week with Snoop Dogg where we interacted every single day, <laughs> and it was really beautiful. That day, I did not see him. Uh, we, we just saw him on stage. It was pretty funny because it was. It was. 20, that is a guy I would like to meet. I would uh, really, that would be a big deal. For can me. I tell you how nice yeah. he is? Like he's so nice. We were working. My band was at Skip Sailor, this mixed studio in L.A like on Larchmont and um and every day he would roll in with his posse and we ended up hanging it was <laughs> it was it was like the uh, January of 1999 when uh when the Clinton he- impeachment hearing started <laughs> so we the, everyone was smoking so much pot in their lounge room that their dudes were kind of like, hey, can we hang out with you guys? Where there's just an average amount of pot being smoked. <laughs> <laughs> and so his joint roller, this guy Marsbird, came in and started rolling blunts in our room. And then like me, Warren G, Nate Dog, my ANR, we were all laying on the floor <laughs> watching the Clinton impeachment hearings together and getting high and then going and playing like ping pong for a week. It was really awesome. Ah, that's it was really amazing. awesome. Yeah. yeah. And he... He, we, we ended up having to stop making our record and we fired everyone and it was really sad. But he got very, like Snoop, got, Snoop was very, like you guys were so happy earlier this week. What happened? Like he was, oh, well, what's, what's wrong, baby? What's been happening? <laughs> He's just so nice. Yeah. Yeah. He's really nice. Hug, hugging. He hugged. <laughs> ah, I love it. But anyway, so yeah, we do. Uh, yeah, we did a thing. We did a thing with like Vanilla Ice and Tone Loke a couple years ago. <laughs> Like skyrocket with, vin- but in for, that one, we for what? just rich, very wealthy people have parties yeah, and they find yeah, totally. famous people Yeah, and then it, they get a cover band to like close out the night or something. Yeah. It's, they're going to pay somebody. That's, that's the way yeah, I look at it. That's exactly the way like, I look at it too. Yeah. <laughs> Especially that money's when you, going to somebody, might as well go to me yeah. or, or to other people that could or, use it. Or when you show up to the gig and you realize it's like a Halliburton, like <laughs> thing and you're like well you know what man greenpeace don't pay this kind of money unfortunately <laughs> man we've there's been a couple couple of things similar to that in my well the thing is too run. is like people have to remember like you've never seen a show with bob dylan and the wallflowers no there was an exxon party that that, that was bob dylan and the wallflowers no. so if you got the millions anyone no. will play anyone dylan exxon it's very true. I need to watch watch what I say on this a little bit. But yeah, no, it's uh well, you know, everybody did you ever see True Stories, the David yeah, Berman? Yeah, yeah. So there's like my favorite line, I say it all the time, it's like where he's driving the fake car, you know, and he's like, Do you like music? Everybody <laughs> says they do. And it's just this weird David Byrne left hanging thing. And I, I think about that all the time. I'm like, Well, everybody says they like music. Yeah. And if they want to pay for it. Yeah. That's fine. <laughs> you know, <laughs> somebody will get something out of this. You know, I, would I love him, David Byrne. Me too. God, there's a guy. That's another dude I've never got to meet. I've seen him a few times, but I've never. He's been in, like, he's Bail. I think he married Bail and Bail's ex wife. No. Possibly. No, married some, somebody did something like that. Well, and then Bail played drums. Bail some... Allen, the artist. Oh, it was, yeah, yeah, it was, it was Colin Gilmore was telling me, because he's good for family friends right, with right, Terry right. and all that, and I think, I don't know if it was Christmas or Thanksgiving or something, Yeah, but he's, and Colin's one of my favorite people in the world, Colin and Tammy are awesome, but Colin's just so nonchalant about that stuff, and he's like, yeah, you know, I was, I was just there, and David Byrne was there, and. Yeah, <laughs> it was just a thing, and I'm like, "What are you talking about? Just a thing? Like that's a huge, that's huge. Yeah, yeah. Like that's that. I would blow my mind. Yeah, and probably. I don't know. He seems like a pretty normal. I mean, not normal, but probably much more normal than he's on the spectrum. Yeah, and totally. Yeah, I don't <laughs> but, think he's not. <laughs> he's weird, but he seems fun. But uh, yeah, I don't yeah. think he's a. You yeah. know, I don't know. Maybe I don't know. Darren's singing. Uh, Darren from Skyrocket is singing with that Heartburn band tonight. Oh yeah, Antics. yeah, yeah. My buddy Ricky Stein's sister is in that band. Oh yeah, yeah. Tricky. Uh, Jones, Does she play bass? No, she just sings. Oh. Aaron, uh, Aaron Stein. She's great. 
Um, there's a guy you should have when he comes to town again. Ricky, I would love to. Ricky Stein. He's he was kind of. Why do like I know my, that name? He he was here for a long time. He wrote a book for the Texas Music Press about or Texas University of Texas Press and about like kind of the history of Austin music. But he's uh, oh, he's really? a great great songwriter and um, he's up in Brooklyn. Um, just he's just had a baby, but he's he's killing it. He's a, he's a really great artist, and he comes back a few times a year and plays Saxon and. Does, does some stuff but ricky stein he's got he's a good good artist not that you don't have enough to do but you get you got to hook me up with a couple of people after today absolutely and uh i'm gonna hold you to that having me come be on your you're, you're you are seriously like you know how like even you're friends with someone and you know they're great and then all of a sudden they do something and you're like fuck they are fucking great <laughs> like this guy really well. is like he's not just my friend and he's great and it's not just me because sometimes sometimes i actually send stuff to people that have nothing to do with music like a brother or sister of mine and i'm like hey is this good and they're like no yeah. it's really good why and i'm like I, I like this guy so much i can't tell if i'm <laughs> no, I do that if too. i just like I give him a head like oh he made a thing and i love him <laughs> but but this is like legitimately just home run record well, well thank you yeah man Thanks. Yeah, I hope I hope people get to hear it. And um, <laughs> me too. That's that, that's a big dilemma for everybody I know. It's like, well, yeah, I work so hard, I make these things, and then what? You know. So hopefully, yeah. the then what is a, a positive experience for everybody. Yeah. So, well, dude, this has been great talking to you. People can find you at grahamweber dot com, wearestos dot com, houseofsongs dot org, and you said grams, gramsgiveback dot com. Okay, gramsgiveback dot. Yeah, I think it's dot com. Yeah. I don't know. I, yeah, see, there you go. I don't know. Punto com. <laughs> yeah. It's for those of you that speak Spanish. Look, my dog destroyed a pillow and then went to sleep. Oh, She's so cute when she's sleeping. She knocked out. What yeah. was in that treat you gave her? Nothing. No, it's just nap time. She gets bored. I get it. People talking, not yeah. talking to her. <laughs> it's great having you on. Thanks, Johnny. Good luck Thanks with so everything. much for having me, man. People get out to so the Unity fun. Show on March 5th. Sorry, I just totally interrupted you. No, Sunday, okay. March 5th at Hotspot. Go ahead and tell me how great it was. <laughs> so great. So great. I want to watch how you move and move. I want to chase you. All right, that was Graham Weber. And the song that you're hearing from his band, Restos, Ain't Dead Yet, drops April 5th. All right, go to GrahamWeber.com for all of your Graham Weber needs. Go to We Are Restos for, for your, all of your Restos needs. I really, really, really love Graham. Love talking to him. He's an inspiration to be around and such a great songwriter. I can't wait for you guys to hear this solo album. So great. Don't forget about the big show. Graham's Give Back and KUTX present the Unity Show this Sunday at, uh, at the Hot Spot. Sunday, March 5th from 3 to 9 p.m. featuring Heartless Bastards. DZ Brown, Buffalo Hunt, Kevin, and many, many more. Go to GrahamsGiveBack.com to get tickets to that. I want to thank Graham for coming on the show. I love that dude. All right. Hey, gang, when you're out there checking out all the stuff that Graham does, <laughs> don't forget that you can subscribe to this podcast wherever it is that you find podcasts. You'll get new shows every Tuesday and every Friday. We also drop late Saturday night every once in a while a From the Vault episode where we reach back into our vault, pull out a show that you might not have heard or might want to hear again, that we, uh, we shine it up. And we re-release it for you to check it out. All right? Have a great weekend or a great week, whatever it is you're doing. Let's get down. 